Hey, what is up guys? It's Yvonne. And in this video, I want to do something a little bit different from my other videos, and that is create a case study on someone else's campaign. So I'm going to be looking at the positives of the campaign, the negatives of the campaign, and then going over things that I think we can improve to make the campaign even more profitable. So we're going to be looking at certain key metrics such as quality score, CTR, and sales, and we're gonna keep track. And if the changes are implemented, uh, then I can make a follow-up video maybe in a week or a few weeks to see if those changes yielded any good results. And so I think these types of videos can really help you guys see what makes a good and profitable successful campaign. And if you guys want me to do the same for your campaigns as well, just send me an email at Ivan at ivanmana.com and maybe I can make a case study video on your campaign as well and help you improve and make more sales. All right. So in this video, we're going to be going over Gary's campaign on Yoga Burn. And before I get straight into it, guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when I make more videos just like this and on different affiliate marketing tools, sharing some tips, tricks, techniques, helping you make money online. All right. So we're going to get straight into it. We're going to go through everything here, the campaign, the ad groups, the keywords, the landing page. I already went through it and what I want to do is just provide you my observations and give you some feedback on how you can improve this campaign. And Gary, if, if you're watching this, this is obviously for you. Thank you for giving me access to this campaign so I can make a whole case study on it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So like I said, the campaign is on Yoga Burn. Okay, so let's start with that. Yoga Burn is a ClickBank product which pays out, uh, I just checked the a little bit over $170 per sale. So it's like $170.44 or something like that. So that's awesome. That is amazing. I do highly suggest products that pay out a lot over $100. So that is a good choice, a very good product. And it seems like it's a legitimate product. You know, there's a lot of scam shady products on ClickBank and many other affiliate networks. So it's good that uh, you're promoting something that's good. So here are some of the stats we have. Here are the columns. So we have an average CTR of 3%, which is very good because you'll see based on the keywords we have. Average cost per click of 11 cents. Uh, we spent a total of $55 on this campaign. Top impression share 40%, so roughly how much it shows up at the top. We have 500 clicks, which is very good. A very high number of clicks considering our low budget of $5 a day, all right? So let's look at the ads real quick and then I'll kind of give you guys a breakdown. So here's the ad, yoga at home for beginners, watch the videos. And then we have the keywords here. And we have the page here. So this is where we are taking people to, okay? So where do we start? So first of all, let's start with the pros, with the positives of the campaign. So first of all, excellent product. Anything that pays out over $100 in commission is my suggestion, especially if it's in the health and wellness niche. There is a huge demand for health and wellness. So you definitely want to do something in that niche, which is what you have here. So excellent job on that. The ad looks very good as well. Yoga at home for beginners. Watch the videos. It matches all your keywords. So your keywords in general say yoga at home, home yoga workouts, how to do yoga at home. And in general, the ad matches that. Okay, the keyword there is something to be said about this point as well, and I will get into it, but starting with everything that is good with what we have here. The website looks very good as well. So uh, Yoga at Home for Beginners, it is a legitimate website. It looks nice, it looks professional. It has a lot of content. It doesn't look like there's any you know crappy plagiarism and stuff like that going on. Looks like there's a lot of thought out stuff. There are a lot of affiliate links, which is amazing, okay? You're selling a lot of stuff. Excellent, excellent, excellent job. And I noticed that you also have extensions. So you have a Cyclic extension here under ad group, all right, under this ad group. So uh, that is good. Under settings, you're also targeting tier one country. So you're targeting Canada and United States. So that is also very good. So I think... Uh, oh, and you went into keywords and I remember you, you told me, Gary, that under negative keywords, you, you added some negative keywords, right? To prevent things from showing up for your specific ad group that you don't want. Amazing stuff. Very good. So you're definitely going to be saving money. Okay. So that I think, 
I, I might have missed something. For the most part, very good, okay? These are very good things with your campaign. For you guys that are watching, everything that I just said is good. That's something you might want to implement in your campaign as well. So you wanna make the title match your keywords, right? You wanna, if you're starting out, I suggest starting with tier one countries because they have the highest quality traffic, things like that, all right? Um, add extensions. You definitely wanna, wanna add your extensions. So now let's get into what are some things we can improve on this campaign. So let's start off with a with the simplest maybe, and then we'll go into the slightly more complicated stuff. So one thing here is extensions. So yes, you do have Scything extensions and that is great. However, there are several things to keep in mind here. One is you only have Scything extensions for this specific ad group. So I believe you have two ad groups here, but maybe by accident or something, you added the extensions for only one ad group. Okay, so what you wanna do when you create extensions is you wanna go into campaign and set extensions here, unless you do want specific extensions for each ad group, which is something possible, that is something you might wanna do later on. Uh, but these extensions here, they seem pretty generic, like they seem general uh, extensions that could be good for any uh, of the ad groups, not just one specific ad group. So that's why I would do it to campaign to make it uh, apply to the entire campaign, not just one ad group, okay? So I would do that. The other thing is you're missing out some incredibly amazing and easy to do extensions, which will fill up more space on your ad. So your ad is good, okay? It is pretty small. We can make it way bigger. So if we go to extensions here, there are many different extensions you can use to do that. So you can go into, uh, not call extensions, I mean call out extensions. You can go here and I notice here you don't have call out extensions under the campaign, under the ad group. So call out extensions will just add more words to the end of your description, okay? So super easy to do. You're just gonna click on create under campaign and it's just gonna, it's basically going to add words to your description. That's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna take up more space. Highly suggest you add call out extensions. Structured snippet extensions, same thing. Super easy to do. It's just going to add words basically to your description. Very simple, very easy to do. It's gonna attract more people. Your ad is gonna be more visible. Uh, there's also a uh, action extension right here. I strongly suggest it's gonna add a little button to the right of your extension. Very easy to do. You literally just have to click on create and choose a, uh, choose a button that you want. Like what do you want it to say? You want it to say add now, start now, right? Here, you say one of these, you enter your URL, that's it, man. It's very easy, but it, it why not? It adds a little button to the right of your uh, ad, makes it easier to click on, okay? So that's basically it. I would just add more extensions, as many as you can. As many as you can, that matches what it is you're doing. So I think what you can also do is you can also add an image extension. Personally, I haven't used it, but you can just add an image and the image will show up somewhere in your ad. So as many extensions as you can add, I would add them, okay? So here, it's gonna show up on the right, okay? On the right side of your ad gets more attention. And especially now, you know, not a lot of people are using these ads. If you go to bing.com, you type stuff in, not a lot of people are using image extensions. They're not, you, so this is really gonna catch somebody's eye, really gonna catch somebody's eye. So really suggest you add extensions. It's gonna increase the CTR, the click-through rate of your ads, so you get more bang for your buck, okay? So that's for extensions. So let's go through some of the other things. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to go with the simplest things first before I delve into the more complicated stuff. So Canada and United States, excellent. Very good tier one locations. However, there are three additional tier one countries that you could add, Australia, New Zealand, and United Kingdom, which for me have worked pretty well. So it is also very high quality traffic. So if you wanna increase the number of searches that you get, and the number of impressions and clicks that you get, instead of, for example, changing your budget to a higher amount, you can just add more countries. And these are still tier one countries you can use. Personally, I always use these five when I start campaigns. You also do have to keep in mind, obviously, if the, if the product allows for it. So if the product says you're only allowed to promote in Canada and US, that's a different story. But if you're allowed to promote anywhere, I start with all the tier one countries, okay? So I would just add it there, because why not? So there's that. Now the other thing, okay, and now we're starting to get into the more, more important stuff that really will make a difference, your budget. So $5 a day. Now, here's the issue with this. We spent a total of $55 on this campaign. How much is the payout? 170. 
So there is still a chance for you to make a sale in the next $120 that you spend and you could still potentially be profitable with this campaign. So there is still a lot of data that you could gather, basically what I'm saying. There is still a lot of data that you could gather that you could pay for without being too much in the minus, right? Because if you spend, if you end up spending 200 bucks, so that's four times your amount and you only make one sale, well, now you are only down 30 bucks, but now you have so much data, okay? And I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by data. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that because this is gonna be extremely useful stuff that is totally worth paying for. And you will see exactly why, all right? So let me go through some of the things here that I put. Uh, expand countries targeting. So that one has been done. Up the budget has been done. Add extensions. Okay, so two more things before I get into the more in-depth keyword stuff and landing page optimization, things like that. So one is for the ad, same as, you know, the same reason why we added extensions, you can add more stuff to your ad. So you can do a title part three. Title part three is optional. It's not always going to show up, but if, it, if there is room for it, why not? I would also add a description too, because then it's going to add more text you know, to your ads, gonna make it more visible, right? That's the goal, you want it to stand out. So if we go to bing.com right now, actually, and we type in yoga for, let's look at like one of your keywords, let's look at your competitors. So first of all, there's all these images that uh, that's kind of new, I haven't seen this before. Then you have this, okay, so let's go down. So it looks like there's not many ads for this. Let me look at like one of your keywords here to be exact. Do yoga at home, okay, so let's try that, let's try do yoga at home. Let's see what we get. So here we have an ad, yoga exercises. Uh, and then here just go straight into the organic traffic. So you have a huge potential. I mean, if you have a big ad here, it's gonna take over. Um, in this case, we're kind of lucky because this is, this is a very minor, you know, small ad. But if you have a bigger ad that takes up more space, well, it's just gonna get more attention, okay? So there's lots of potential here. Let, let's try another keyword. Let me copy this and paste it here. So again, there's videos, okay, okay, okay. There's no ads, yeah. So your ad, I, I'm not sure if it's gonna show up at the very top or below the uh, below these videos. I think it will actually, it's gonna show up at the very top. Let's try Yoga at Home Beginners. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show you your competitors and try to show you that, in this case, there's not much competition, which is amazing. If there was though, the more you write in your ads, the more they're gonna stand out. Because as you saw in that one ad, which was just one line long, like it didn't even have, had a very tiny description, right? You would really stand out. And that's what you have to do eventually is compete, okay? For the good products, you will have to compete against other ads, so you have to make them stand out. So what I would do for your ads is I would just add more to it. I would just add a title part three, which again, it's optional. It's not always going to show up, but in this case, it probably will, because there's a lot of space. Add text to as well. I would also make this like title case. So I would make that a capital W, make that a capital Y, capital N, right? It's gonna attract a little bit more attention. I would do something here that will also get more attention. So by adding numbers. So, and the seven common mistakes, right? Add a number. How many common mistakes are we talking about? It's gonna add more attention. Like look at this, that's all text versus this the seven kind of stands out to me, right? It's like, it's a different symbol. It's something completely different. And it just stands out to me a little bit more and it catches my eye. It makes me want to click on it more, right? So if you can add numbers, if you can add ampersands, I would do that. So I would say, for example, instead of using and, I would use and. Notice how, to me, that, that instantly catches my eye, okay? So I would use numbers, ampersands, symbols, things like that whenever you can to do it. And title case, okay? I love these, these arrows, very good. I do love it. Uh, very good that you have a call to action. Very good title part one keyword. Like I said, excellent. I would just add more, that's all. Uh, there's a few more things I would do. One is I would add a split test, okay? So I would add at least one variation, just one, doesn't have to be many. So what you would do is you can click on save and create another, and then you would just change something up. So instead of saying watch the videos, maybe say get started now, try out now. Or instead of yoga at home for beginners, maybe say, I don't know, uh, beginner's guide to yoga, like anything, right? Something else, that's the key. What we wanna do is just try out different things. You only have one ad, you have 141 clicks, 
but there could be a better ad, right? So you always want to be split testing, always want to be split testing. And the other thing is you do want to switch to responsive search ads. Okay. So the way you do it, you can create a text that out of responsive search ads. I have a video on it. It's very simple to do. Basically what you would do is if you create, let me just quickly show you how you would do it. Um, I suggest doing responsive search ad cause that's the future. And cause you want to, you want to do it now cause text ads are going to be outdated. Okay. So, uh, what you would do is you would just write headline one, for example, here you would write headline two, and then all you're going to do is pin it. So you can say, okay, I want this headline to show up in position one, this headline to show up in position two, and that's it. And that th this is, this basically becomes a text ad. Okay. It's the same thing. And then you would do the same thing for description. You would write a description, say, okay, only in position one. And then this description only in position two, and then you can add more descriptions. You can add more headlines. And so the way you can split test your responsive search ad is by either making more ads, which is actually what I would do. I would just make one ad like this with the responsive search ad by pinning. And then I would save and create another ad. I would create another ad. But what you could also do is you could say headline one, um, you know, split test one. And then you can also pin this to position one. And so now these two are going to be tested against each other. Okay. These two, that's another way you can split test, but yeah, basically I'm just showing you how to create a responsive search ad for your future because text ads are being outdated. They're being removed. Okay. So that's that that's for the ad. So add more, we can add more to it. There's one huge thing. Okay. So now we're moving on to the really big things that are really going to make a big difference. And that is conversion tracking. Do you, or do you not have conversion tracking set up? Because otherwise you will have no idea which keywords are working for you. So Microsoft ads does not have an integration with ClickBank. They do not. All right. Google ads does, and it does work to an extent, a little crappy, but it does work. Microsoft ads does not integrate with ClickBank. So what you have to do is use a third party tool. You kind of have to, man. Like, yes, it's optional in order to make sales, but if you want to optimize and go further than the first few days, you do need to set up tracking. I use Click Magic. You can use whatever tool you want. I've been using them for six years, never had issues. So that's important because once you do the split test and once you look at your keywords, you want to be able to see what converts. That is uber important. Okay. I would say don't run any ads at all. You know, the other things I mentioned, you can leave them. That's fine. But this do not run your campaign until you set up tracking. Okay. Um, if you want to go with click magic, or for example, let's say you are using click magic and you're totally stuck. You can either message me, you can ask me, Hey, you know, do you have a video on this? And I most likely do. I think I create, I created one a while ago, or you can just ask their support. Okay. They have amazing support. Every, uh, or most tracking systems will have some sort of support. Ask them, say, Hey, I want to track my Microsoft ads. Here's my website. How the hell do I set it up? Ask them. They will help you. You have to do it. Okay. No excuse not to, you have to do it because once we go to the keywords, once you look over here, you have no idea which keywords work or not. You just have no idea and you have to, okay. Look at all this data, look at all these clicks and you have no idea. Now, like I mentioned, I would put more than $5 a day. You're spending, you're making 170 per sale. You're spending $5 a day. I would do more, man. I would do 10, 15, tw like 20, at least to be honest. I made a video a while ago saying that if you have like your last hundred dollars, do not do affiliate marketing, do not do paid ads with your last hundred dollars. Okay. So I would suggest you get a full-time job. You have an income that is where you're comfortable spending that money. You're okay to lose it because the first parts of a campaign is you gathering data, you gathering this data right here. And I'll delve into it in more detail in a second, but this is the type of da data you're looking for these keywords. And you're trying to see what works. And we're going to go into more detail into the search terms, not just the keywords, but you want to be able to tell what the hell works and what doesn't. And you have to do that with your tracking and you need more data than this, because some of the keywords, look, you spent two bucks on this one. Okay. You're making 170 per sale. What if you spend another hundred dollars on this keyword and you make a sale? What if for every hundred dollars you spend on this keyword, you make one sale? What if you have no freaking idea? You only spent two bucks on it. You don't know that. So I would say expand your budget, get to a position in life where you're comfortable 
spending a bit more because if you're making 170 bucks per sale, you will need more, okay? So if you're not comfortable doing something like that, I would suggest, like I said, doing this as a side thing, okay? There is some level of gambling to it. There is some gambling in your campaigns because not every campaign will be profitable. Even with all the changes, it's possible the campaign just won't work and that's okay, right? So you have to be okay to lose the money. So point is we need more data. We need more data for this. The more data, the better, because here's why. Let's get into the, the meat and bones of it. Is that what you say? So do yoga at home, okay? That's your keyword. Do yoga at home. And you have an ad that says yoga at home workout or something. And people go to this page. Now, here is the question that we're trying to answer. What do people mean when this keyword is triggered? What do people mean when this keyword is triggered? What are they trying to find out? Are they trying to find out a guide for how to do yoga at home? Are they trying to find out why they should do yoga at home? The four reasons to do yoga at home. Are they trying to find, I don't know, some professor, some instructors to help them do yoga at home? We have no clue. So the way we find that is by going into search terms, which is what you have done. Good job. You've added negative keywords like that. That's amazing. But we have to do more than that. So here's why I say data matters. So first of all, search term won't always show you everything, which is unfortunate, but we can still go with the data that we have. And this is why I say we need more data. So we need to see which keyword and which search term converts. So this is what people are actually typing in. So yoga poses with pictures and instructions, okay? So this is what somebody typed in and this is what they get. Is this what they were looking for, okay? Your goal with this website, with this blog, is to build trust with your audience. If you can build their trust, you can gain their trust, they will be more than happy to click on the links that you have here recommended because they're going to trust you. They're going to trust your recommendation. So if they're typing in yoga poses with pictures and instructions, you want to give them that ideally. So maybe what you want to do here is add some sort of table of contents for all of these things here. Okay. Yes, it is a lot of work and this is kind of a long-term thing. You could get away with having one category for everything like, you know, for like, Yoga at home for beginners could cover all of these. They could cover it, it's fine. But if you wanna really fine tune it and really help people and gain their trust, you have to give them exactly what they're searching for. So if somebody types in yoga with poses and pictures and instructions, maybe you wanna have another section here that says yoga instructions, how to do yoga. Or maybe if you have it already, maybe add a table of contents so people can immediately know that you are giving them what they're searching for, all right? So if you look at all these things, DIY yoga, do it yourself yoga, people are searching for how to do yoga by themselves. So maybe this could do it. Okay. So maybe you want to add a table of content section that says that DIY yoga, what you need to get started with yoga at home, right? Things like that. So this isn't really enough data. You don't want to make any changes right now to your website because this isn't enough data. One click is hardly anything. I'm saying, assuming you have enough data, assuming you have, let's say over a hundred clicks on a certain point. So let's say you have one click here, but then you have 100 clicks on one of them. Okay. Which clearly stands out. You might want to make that section very clear, especially if you're not making any sales, because what's happening is people are probably typing this in expecting to get it. They land on your site and they don't see it. Okay. And that's a problem. That's what you you have to give to them what they want. Yoga online for beginners. Like, what exactly are people looking for? Yoga online for beginners. So I'm guessing people are looking for some sort of guide that people can do yoga for beginners. So four benefits of practicing yoga at home is already irrelevant. They don't care about that. What you need to get started with yoga could be. This could be an answer to what they're looking for. Choosing a space could be, okay? So point is you wanna be as specific and detailed as possible. So yoga activity for students at home. This could fall under a category of just yoga activity, you know, at home that could fall under that category. Face yoga six. So yeah, basically the point is you wanna look at all the clicks and see what people are typing for and deliver it to them. That's the goal. 
To that end, you will need more data. One click is far from enough, but that's what you want to do. So get more data and then do that. So um, you can, for example, click on this one and click on search terms and see what home yoga workout brings. This one's to, uh, to intimate couples yoga at home. So look at that. Intimate couples yoga at home. So you have two clicks. You spend 12 cents. Do you have anything about intimate couples yoga at home? No. So you can either add it or you can add this as a negative keyword, which is what I see you've been doing. Okay. So 12 cents is nothing. You can still probably leave it on for another few bucks and see maybe people will find value, but eventually that's the goal. You want to either throw it or you want to add a section about it. And what you could also do is just go into keywords and instead of selecting a specific one, you just go into search terms here and see what the most common thing that people searched is. So aloe yoga leggings, which um, I believe you've excluded. Yeah, so you've excluded this. You've added this in your negative keyword list, which is good because you don't offer that. So that's what you want to do. You want to go through all of these and see what people exactly are typing in and what you are delivering, what you're giving them. So if you don't have aloe yoga leggings, that's perfect. You toss that out. Yoga online for beginners. So it's a huge CTR because that's exactly what your ad says. Great job. Now, the issue is you don't really know what they're searching for. So yoga online for beginners. It's like, you know, maybe you would have to go into forum posts about yoga and find out what exactly people are searching for when they type in yoga online. So I'm guessing they're looking for some sort of guide, some sort of instructor. Okay. So maybe this could be it. Yoga post tutorial, yoga flow beginner. I would just maybe make this more clear, you know, um, imagine yourself. So me, this is the first time I'm seeing this website. So for me, this is totally new. So this isn't very clear. I mean, the title is right here. And I think this video belongs to this right here. So I think, so I'm going to skip through this video because it's under this category for benefits of practicing yoga at home. So I'm just going to skip through it. And that's probably not something you want. So Maybe you do want a section. It's like, hey, how to start yoga for beginners. Maybe you want another title that says how to start yoga for beginners. And over here, yeah, I get, I think you you have it here, what you need to get started. I would make this a little more clear. I, I think this is maybe a little long. So I would just maybe condense it to, uh, you know, yoga for beginners and then do the double dots, right? The semicolon or, or whatever it is and, and then say what you need to get started. So yoga for beginners at home, the, the, the double dots, what you need to get started, things like that. Um, just to catch somebody's eye more and then maybe add it in the table of contents here at the top of the page. So people know what it is um, that, that, that you have, what it is they're looking for. And this is good. Yeah. I mean, ev everything is good. Just that's the idea, right? So you want to give people what they're looking for. And yeah, so eventually what you want to do is create separate ad groups, right? So in your ad here, you have yoga at home for beginners. So eventually you want to create many, many, many different ad groups. So you'll have one ad group for this stuff. You'll have one ad group for that, whatever you did. And then another one for yoga online for beginners. And that's going to be your title yoga online for beginners. And then what you could also even do is if you have the capability to send people right away to a specific section of the page, that would be good too. So if you can send them, for example, right away, um, like, there should be an option where you put in the number sign and then say like FAQs or something. And then if you click enter, it's going to scroll you to that section. So if you can make it scroll, for example, right away to this section, that will be helpful too, right? Because you want to give people exactly what they're looking for right off the bat. Otherwise their interest is going to just go away. So that's the thing. So I would say one, get more data, increase your budget. And then two, maybe add some sort of table of contents because you want to give people exactly what they're looking for, which isn't quite what we have here. Um, these are good. Now on the actual website, so this is a very good website. I like it. It looks professional, looks good. One thing I would do is maybe remove the sticky bar from the ad page. Okay. So if you're paying for ads, right? SEO is one thing because it's all organic because it's free. But if you're paying for ads, you want to focus people's attention on something. So generally that's why landing pages are actually recommended for um, for these ad networks, landing pages are recommended because you're drawing attention to the action you want them to take. So in this case, the action is, for example, yoga at home for beginners, right? So the action is what you want them to take is buy these things recommended, 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 right? 
Now, the issue here is people get distracted, so they might be scrolling and then they might see these and they might move on to something else, okay? Which could be good if you have um, other products that you're selling. It could be good, it could work, but in general, you wanna bring your attention here. So let's not confuse landing page and bridge page. So the issue normally is Microsoft and Google are strict on affiliates. A bridge page basically means a page that has a different URL than the final URL, which is the affiliate link you're sending people to. So that is getting harder and harder to do over time. But with a landing page, what you could do is you could maybe make a landing page with the exact same URL, healthcuriosity.com, and then you can have a link that takes them to this blog, in which case that will be okay. That will not be considered a bridge page. That's just a regular landing page that you're using that is allowed with Google. You are allowed to do a landing page. The main thing is the URL has to match. That's the only thing. The issue is that normally with bridge pages, URLs don't match because we're sending people from one URL to the affiliate sales page, right? Which makes it a little, a little harder for affiliates. It's getting harder and harder. You can still do it, especially with Microsoft ads. It's still okay. But Google Ads has been more, more strict to it, so you have to find other ways to do it. But basically, my point is you want to have a clear call to action and you want to like, center people's attention on what it is you want them to do. So if you want them to read this blog, I would remove the sticky bar at least maybe from this page if you can so they can focus on just this blog. The other thing is maybe if you can, maybe add a call to action somewhere. I know you don't want to seem salesy, but maybe if you can add like, I don't know, a button maybe here at the top, if you're going to keep this portion, right? Or maybe add a button somewhere here at the bottom or something like that. Maybe just to say, hey, you know, check out this cool yoga product, something like that. Because ideally you want the goal, you want to give people something to click on, something to do, right? That's the goal is you want to make sales. This is great and this could work. It's a very subtle way. But in general, the rule is when you have a landing page, you want to have a clear call to action. So if you can add some sort of button to make it clear that, hey, this is what you should do. This is what I want you to do. That would be good as well. So just add a button throughout the page somewhere that says something like, hey, check out the most popular yoga product or I, whatever it is, right? Whatever Yoga Burn does. I don't know. It's a Yoga Burn foundation map. Yeah. So like ju just add a button that says, check out cool yoga resources, check out cool yoga, yoga things, cool yoga mats, whatever. Okay. So that is basically it. Like you want to, basically the idea is get more, uh, increase the budget so you get more data and two, give people what they want, because that's important right now. I don't quite see that happening. And part of the reason is because there's not enough data, but you want to give them a table of contents or something to make it clear to people that you have what they want. So sticky bar, give people what they're searching for, table of contents, up the budget, expand countries, add extensions, split tests, and add more switch to responsive search ads. So I think I covered everything I wanted to. Um, there's nothing glaringly obvious that I wanna cover right now. So hopefully this video was helpful for you, Gary, and for everybody else watching this as to what makes a good campaign and then how you can improve it, how you can make it better. So if you're able to make these changes, let's keep track of the results. So Gary told me right now, there weren't any sales on this campaign, nor on the other affiliate products. And if we go into ad groups, let's look at the, uh, the quality score, which is seven out of 10 for this campaign, which could be improved with relevance. Okay. So the landing page experience and the expected click through rate could be better. And I think the click through rate could be improved by a having different ads for these specific ad groups and B, um, by adding these extensions, all these extensions. And by the way, if you go into campaigns, um, and if you go to recommendations, so your optimization score is 12.5, which is pretty low, but everything that I mentioned to you actually is covered in the optimization score. So I know what you mean, and, and this is true. A lot of the times these affiliate uh, or these um, traffic sources, they do wanna make more money. And so they will kind of add some suggestions like up your bid, you know, where you don't really have to, things like that. So some things you can improve, but some things are actually very valuable. So if we look at the optimization score, so save time and money by importing from Google ads. Okay, we don't need that. That doesn't affect us. Set up conversion tracking, absolutely important. I mean, I'd give this like 50% to your optimization score, not 8.3. It's that important. You need tracking. You have no idea what's going to work, man. You'll have no idea. You need conversion tracking. 
Add new keywords. I wouldn't say add new keywords. I would say get more data and tailor your keywords more to your website. I would do that. Add image extensions and just the other extensions that I mentioned. Absolutely. Call out action extensions, structured snippet extensions and image extensions are the ones you can for sure add and they will definitely add to your CTR. Add more trending search queries. So yes, this is basically what I was telling you about is you have to pay attention to the search terms and what people are typing in and you can create separate ad groups with those. Okay, again, extensions, keyword bids. I wouldn't do that. I think you're okay with your bid. You're totally fine. You're getting enough traffic. The only issue is the budget and that is covered here. Okay, so that, yeah, so the import from Google Ads, 70%. I don't know why it says that because what if you don't have a Google Ads account? So basically all these things will really drastically improve your score or they should um, if it wasn't for this 70% thing, which is weird. But anyway, point is uh, regardless of the score, this score doesn't matter at all. If you implement the changes that I suggest, I do anticipate a much, much higher increase in your CTR and ultimately in your sales. And real quick, let's just go to the CTRs. So let's go to the, we can go into ads. So we see an average of 3% CTR, but then we can go into keywords and we can look at the CTR. So, you know, some of the keywords are doing a little better than others, but the ones that are getting the most clicks, these ones, I anticipate a higher CTR even if we implement all these changes. And if we put them into their separate ad groups and we have these different ads that are going to speak to them and ads that will have a bit more information, right? So just a bit more on the ads. So to, to make it bigger, make it stand out more, right? If we make the ad stand out more with more descriptions, more headlines, more extensions, it's gonna stand out. So I hope this video was helpful for you, Gary, and everybody watching this. Like I said, if you guys have a campaign that you want me to go over and do the same level of analysis as I have here with your website, with your ads, your keywords, your extensions, and see how we can improve your ads, again, send me an email at ivan at ivanmana.com. Uh, basically, I request managerial access for your account so I can go in there and I can look at things and I can then create a video for you as well to help you improve. Um, if you guys found this valuable, definitely take a look at my website at ivanmana.com. I offer you guys a free 55 page affiliate marketing guide and I have training courses which can guide you through and show you how to set everything up basically that I described in this video. It'll show you how to set everything up and hopefully you should start making more sales. All right. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.